Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is your boy Fitzmong TV here, aka Jalorn33. I want to welcome you guys back here to the channel, back here tonight with another episode of the Legit Shoot Podcast, here with your SmackDown review and results for February 12, 2021. Hopefully, you guys are staying safe and healthy. Hopefully, you guys are doing well. Well, we're going to talk about SmackDown tonight. Before we get into anything SmackDown related, I want to give a huge shout out to the homie JDE, right? If you guys have been here for the live streams or you guys look in the comment section, right? He's uh, one of the more loyal subscribers to the channel, you know? He made this awesome layout. This is going to be the new layout for SmackDown reviews going forward. I've been trying to get a new layout since uh, September. And uh, the guy who used to do my layouts, uh, Sauriax, I haven't been able to get in any contact with him. So we were never able to get the layouts updated. But JD came through and he offered to do them, right? I didn't have to ask him or anything, but he offered to do them. And this is absolutely fire. So he might be doing the, all the layouts going forward for Raw and SmackDown and pay-per-views, right? He made one for Raw for me, and you guys will see that on the Raw review this week. But... You know, this SmackDown one looks absolutely banger. I love it, right? You got our girl Sasha Banks, the GOAT, right in the middle the, with the championship like it should be. She better retain that mania. We'll definitely talk about that a little bit on tonight's podcast. Uh, we got Bianca Belair, the future. We have Bailey. Of course, we have the Tribal Chief and we have Big E. You know, I might have this updated as we have new champions, right? Uh, but still, this is an awesome layout. It's going to be the one you guys see going forward. So, uh, still, shout out to JD for this. You are the man. Uh, but yeah, getting into nice SmackDown. SmackDown, you know... Uh, we see where they're going with the direction of the Elimination Chamber. There will be no Women's Elimination Chamber match this year, like I said on Raw. I, I, you, I thought we were going to get a Raw, you know, and SmackDown Elimination Chamber match. The One for the men, one for the women. I thought Sasha Banks would be defending the SmackDown Women's Championship inside the Elimination Chamber. But that is not the case. Instead, we're getting... Two men's elimination chamber matches, one for the WWE Championship and one for the number one contender for the Universal Championship. I don't like the way they did it. I don't like the way they did it. That's what we're going to be talking about mostly on the show tonight. We're, I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on why I don't like what SmackDown did with the elimination chamber uh, this year. We're also going to be talking about Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins, the Messiah. He made his return to SmackDown. Uh, I'm going to let you guys know what I thought of his return, you know. And it seems like there is a direction for Seth for WrestleMania. I, I definitely see where they're going with this. And, you know, I don't know how I feel about it yet. Also, we had Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. They had a segment, so they're continuing to tease the match between Sasha and Bianca, which I'm here for. I'll keep repeating it until I have to. Sasha has to retain at WrestleMania no matter what. I don't care what anybody says. Right, but it looks like, you know, we might be going down the John Cena, Shawn Michaels route with the story they tell with Sasha Bianca going to WrestleMania. There's nothing confirmed yet, but just based on what they did tonight, right, uh, I would not be surprised if they take this John Cena, Shawn Michaels approach from WrestleMania 23, and we'll talk about that on the channel. Those were the three big things coming out of SmackDown tonight. SmackDown Women's Championship, the return of Seth Rollins, and the Elimination Chamber for Roman Reigns' Universal Championship. Those are going to be the big three things we talk about, right? But of course, we'll go through the full show like we always do, right? I have actually have somewhere I got to be in about, you know, 50 minutes. So, you know, let me move my camera over just a little bit so it's more centered. That's better. But I'm going to try to go through this fairly quickly, right? But give you guys, you know, the podcast you guys always expect here on the channel, right? If you guys are new to the channel, as always, thank you guys for coming through. Leave a like on the video if you guys enjoy. Also, subscribe if you guys are new to the channel by hitting the bell right next to my name, Fitzwang TV. So you are notified every time I post a new video. Follow me down on social media. As you guys can see on the layout, uh, at glorn33 on Twitter. My Instagram is down there too. But, uh, you know, if you guys want to get in contact with me, if you want to get in contact with me quicker, I would go to, uh, straight to my Twitter where I live tweet all that good stuff, right? Without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So SmackDown, SmackDown wasn't a bad show. It wasn't a bad show. It did its job. It built towards uh, 
he he just he, you know it, it built he built towards uh you know elimination chamber right and like I said, I'm not that happy with how they did the Elimination Chamber for the men's SmackDown match, right? Yeah, you know, and the reason for that, I said it on the Monday Night Raw review, right? If you're going to do two men's Elimination Chamber matches, one should be for a title like we're seeing with Drew McIntyre in the WWE Championship, and another should be to determine who the other champion is going to face at WrestleMania, because... Excuse me. We know that coming out of the WWE Championship match at the Elimination Chamber, whoever wins that match will be Drew's opponent at Mania, right? No matter if Drew retains, if Drew retains, it's most likely going to be Drew versus Sheamus. I definitely, I already said this on the Raw review, I would not be surprised if we have Sheamus win the Elimination Chamber match, right? And he goes on to face Drew McIntyre because remember, Drew never got his big moment from WrestleMania from last year because that's when the pandemic started. So I would not be surprised if they give Sheamus the WWE Championship, have him walk into WrestleMania as champion just to have Drew regain the title for the third time in a year, right? So he can get that big moment in front of the fans. Because remember, they're doing that whole best friends turn rival storyline like they did with Sasha Banks and Bayley. So I would not be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised, right? Now with SmackDown, with what they're doing on SmackDown, I am I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it, right? First off, I was I've been on you know saying you should probably have Sasha defend in the Elimination Chamber, right? I've been here trying to say they need to give Sasha the strongest reign possible. Sasha's reign as SmackDown Women's Champion should be all about her going through the best of SmackDown and showing everybody why she's so damn good as a babyface. It's that simple, you know. Booking Sasha as a babyface champion should not be this difficult. If Sasha was to lose the title at Mania, right? All she would really have is she beat Asuka at Survivor Series, you know, but it wasn't a title defense. It was just champion versus champion, and she defeated Carmella two straight pay-per-views. You know, we all know Sasha deserves a better title reign than that. Sasha should just be getting started as SmackDown Women's Champion, you know? And it's like with each passing day, I get more and more fearful that Sasha could lose the title at Mania. I'm hoping she doesn't because I'm hoping that she keeps that title all the way to SummerSlam and then they do the title change to Bianca. That's the story that they should be telling here. Not rushing Bianca all the way up the food chain just to have her win the title at Mania and that be that. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be like that. You know, I'm sorry. Here's the thing, right? Right now, we don't. It looks like they might be going down the Shawn Michaels and John Cena route with Sasha and Bianca, having them possibly win the tag titles and having that having them be tag be tag champions who face each other for a world championship at Mania. That could be the story they're going on. They definitely teased that with SmackDown tonight. But to be honest, I would have just rather them have Sasha defend in the chamber, have her defend against Bailey, Carmella, right? You know, maybe Liv Morgan. I don't know, Natalia, and either Chelsea Green, or I know Chelsea Green's going to be coming back from injury here, or Rhea Ripley. Because, what you know, we've been hearing rumors of Rhea Ripley. She was supposed to debut on SmackDown these last couple weeks, and she still hasn't made her debut. I don't know what they're waiting for. You know, I would. I think this is the perfect time to debut Rhea Ripley. If you want, you can do a Rhea Ripley versus Sasha Banks match on the road to WrestleMania. Even though technically that's a WrestleMania match in itself, but I would have no problem with them doing it at the Chamber and Fastlane since you have two pay-per-views till Mania. But instead, you're doing two Men's Elimination Chamber matches, and the way you're doing the SmackDown Men's Elimination Chamber match isn't even all that good. You're having the winner of the Men's Elimination Chamber match not get a match against Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, but instead, you're having the winner of that match face Roman Reigns in the same night. Does that make any sense? Everybody knows how brutal the Elimination Chamber match is, right? You know, you got to survive through all of that just to win. You know, with the pods and the steel and all that. The brut- It's a brutal match. Brutal match, you know? And most of the time, an Elimination Chamber match is for a championship, right? Or for the opportunity to go get a championship match at WrestleMania, I remember John Cena won an Elimination Chamber match, and that was the year that he went on to face The Miz for the WWE title at Mania back in WrestleMania 27, right? So they've done that. You know, they usually always do the Chamber match for a number one contender match at Mania 
or for a title. This year, instead, the winner of that match gets a title match on the same night. And the way they did it with Roman Reigns, it makes sense because of Roman's character and he's a heel. Why would Roman, a heel champion, want to defend his title inside the chamber? But the fact that they're going to do a match in the same night, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter if it's Daniel Bryan or Kevin Owens. It doesn't matter who wins that chamber match. It's not believable that that guy's going to have any shot against a fresh Roman Reigns. An elimination chamber match can go 30, 40, sometimes 50 minutes. And whoever wins that match, you're telling me they're going to have to be in that chamber for almost an hour and then have to face a fresh Roman Reigns? Sorry, I don't care if they do the Elimination Chamber match to begin the show and then they do the title match at the end of the show. It's not going to be fair. Roman has a huge advantage. And even though it's, you know, we already know that Roman's good and go into WrestleMania as champion, no matter what, since it looks like we're getting Roman versus Edge, right? It still doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. I would much rather you say, oh, the winner of that match faces Roman Reigns at Fastlane or something like that. In the same night, it makes no sense. If you want to do something like, oh, the winner of the match gets a title uh, match at Fastlane, and then Roman Reigns just defends the title against somebody else, right? Like, I've been saying, have him, uh, you know, defend the title against Shinsuke Nakamura, who just turned babyface. Do that. But it makes no sense, no sense for the person to get a title match against Roman in the same night when Roman's going to be 100% fresh. Even if it's predictable that Roman's going to retain. It just doesn't make sense. And I don't like it. It makes the Elimination Chamber match just look pointless. Because you're going to go through all that in a Chamber match just to lose against Roman when he already's going to have a massive advantage? I'm not here for it. I'm sorry. I love Roman. I love what they're doing with him. But... I don't know. I feel like they could have done way better. And this is the problem because now that every almost everyone knows that it looks like it's most likely going to be Edge versus Roman at Mania, right? Now you've booked yourselves into a corner. If you had just done Edge versus McIntyre, right? The winner of the WWE Championship match at Elimination Chamber goes on to face Edge for the title at Mania, then this would not be a problem. Because then you could just book the Elimination Chamber match to be whoever wins that match faces Roman at Mania. But since for the most part, most people know that it's going to be Roman versus Edge at Mania, it, it doesn't make sense. You know, because you know that whoever wins the Men's Elimination Chamber match for the Universal title is not going to win the title to begin with. It's a waste of time. It really is a waste of time unless you're a pure casual idiot who has no clue what the hell's going on and is sitting on the edge of their seats. Like, oh, oh, who's going to face Roman? Does he actually have a chance to win the championship? But coming from a guy who knows the product and knows the business like me, we all know that no matter if it's Daniel Bryan or not, unless they WWE has a complete three, does a complete 360 in their line of thinking and we get... You know, you know, Edge versus McIntyre or Edge versus the WWE Champion at Mania. That this everything they're doing here with the Elimination Chamber match makes no sense. If Roman was defending inside the chamber, that's different, right? But this makes no sense because we know whoever wins the chamber match is not going to beat Roman in the same night, let alone at Fastlane. Because we already know Edge versus Roman is the plan. This is why WWE needs to think about this. This is why you can't just walk into a SmackDown and just say, oh, how are we going to do the Elimination Chamber? Well, you know, let's just do this. Let's just do that, right? It, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. And WWE, I don't like the way they're doing it. I would just much rather either have Roman defend inside the chamber or have Sasha defend her championship inside the Elimination Chamber. It's really that simple at the end of the day. It really is. You know, so that's my little, you know, I guess you could say a mini rant, but I'm just trying to make you guys, you know, I'm just trying to make you guys understand why, you know, you know, why I, I'm, I have this line of thinking. I'm here to educate you guys. I'm not just here to rant and go on and on. I, I'm trying to give you guys an actual, you know, outlook of why I think this way. You know what I mean? So, uh, basically, basically, uh... Moving on into the actual show tonight, right? Like I said, this show was built around Roman Reigns having a massive announcement and the return of Seth Rollins. So, I want to ask you guys a question real quick, right? For if you didn't, you know, if you didn't watch, uh, 
if you didn't watch SmackDown? You know, even though it was a decent show, how did SmackDown begin? Can anybody take a guess real quick? Anybody? Right? F- free shout out for whoever gets it. You know, if you said Roman Reigns began SmackDown tonight, you were right. For like the eighth straight week, Roman Reigns started SmackDown. I keep repeating myself. I hate being repetitive. Even though SmackDown has been decent for the most part, right, throughout the early part of this year. Way better than Monday Night Raw, who just gets worse every single week. The fact that Roman Reigns starts SmackDown every single week is ridiculous. It's the same crap every single time. Legit. It takes Roman so long to get down to the ring. I feel like I, there's so many things I could do within that time that it takes Roman to get down to the ring. I hate it, man. It's the only thing about Roman that I don't like. The guy, he does a three to four minute entrance every single time. He's just standing there, you know, looking at what? Virtual screens. There's nobody there in the Thunderdome, bro. It's virtual screens. If there were actual fans there, fine. If you want to do your long entrance. He has a longer entrance than The Undertaker, bro. He legit stands up there for a minute, looks, then he does his pyro, then he it takes him another minute and a half to walk down to the ring, then it takes him another minute just because he's looking at the virtual screens while we're like standing on the steel, the steel steps, then he gets into the ring, then he holds his title again for more pyro, and then he, he starts his promo or whatever. Why do we got to start SmackDown the same way every single time, man? Like, it's it's repetitive, and it's not good. It doesn't do anything for the show. As good as Roman Reigns is, man, at least do something different. I would have started the show with, you know, this return of Seth Rollins and done the Roman stuff later in the show. I don't know why we have to start with the same stuff every time. Like, well, come on, man. But anyway, you know, Adam Pierce was in the ring raiding with a, uh, with a binder, right? Uh, Reigns told Pierce that he had no authority over the champ, and he is there just to wait on him. So good stuff by Roman. Uh, always, man. You know, I kind of like that. You're there to wait on me. Yeah, just like we're here to wait on you with your long-ass entrance. I like you, Roman, but come on, man. We don't have time for a three-minute entrance every single time. It kind of takes you out of the moment. It, it really does, if I'm being honest. Right? It doesn't matter how good you are. When you're taking that long to get into the ring, The Undertaker doesn't even take that long to get into the ring, man. Like, come on. Move your ass along. Anyway, uh, you know, Roman said that he would put Edge into retirement again if they end up facing each other at WrestleMania. You know, Roman was like, you know, we're going to have to put Edge on a Legends contract if he keeps showing his ass up here. So, like, once again, Roman just not giving a shit. You know, that's how badass Roman is right now. He doesn't care. He doesn't care what anybody thinks, you know? So, uh, uh, so after that, you know, he said he promised to keep the title for as long as he wanted. And he, uh, he then started asking Adam about Elimination Chamber, right? He, he was like, all right, uh, so I'm guessing you're here about the Elimination Chamber. And like I said, the way Roman went about this was fine. He's the heel. It makes perfect sense, right? But I just don't care. I just don't care about the way they booked the Elimination Chamber because I know nobody is taking that title off of Roman before WrestleMania. That's what I hate that WWE didn't plan this. There was no plan here, man. It should be Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship at Mania. It should be. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, man, but WWE once again dropped the ball. They did. Anyway... Uh, Pierce told him that he had a contract that said Romans would defend the t- uh, defend the Universal Championship inside the Elimination Chamber. Romans said, "No, no, no, no. That's not the way this works." And then he gave, you know, the uh, then he gave the mic to Heyman, right? So Heyman went over about how Roman has to be at the Elimination Chamber to defend his title, but there was nothing in his contract that says he has to defend inside the chamber, right? So uh, so basically Heyman said, this is what you're going to do, right? You're going to have the Elimination Chamber, and you're going to have these six guys fight for the opportunity to face the Universal Champion. And whoever wins the match 
will face Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. Not at Fastlane, not at Mania, not on an edition of SmackDown, but that same night, right? So putting some big stakes here with this match, you know? And like I said, I'm not, I wasn't against it. It's just, I just didn't like the way they did it. I don't like the way they did it because we know that Roman's going to be 100% fresh. It doesn't matter how much you try to have Roman Reigns sell for his opponent. There's not going to be anything that you can do that makes me believe that whoever, you know, wins that chamber match, no matter if it's Daniel Bryan or Cesaro KO, doesn't matter who, there's nothing that you can do to make me believe that that man is going to defeat Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship on Elimination Chamber night. There's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. All right? So, uh, after that, Pierce said that he would think about it, but he confirmed that Uso and Owens would be given spots in the chamber after, you know, running Reigns close in recent months. So, basically, KO and Jey Uso don't have to qualify for the Elimination Chamber, which is whatever, Right, I can understand that this is Adam Pierce trying to get back at Roman, and you could tell it worked because Roman got really pissed. Adam Pierce tried to leave the ring. Roman got really pissed. He gave the title to Haven, and and you know he went right up to Adam Pierce, but you know he didn't do anything violent. Right, he, you know he could have easily took out Adam Pierce right then and there, but then they would have done that whole stupid storyline where oh Roman gets suspended for putting his hands on a WWE official, blah blah blah. I don't care about that. Right, I don't think any of us are interested in seeing that. But, you know, I like KO, but he shouldn't be in this match. I'm sorry. You know, I don't care that he's the babyface here. He lost three title matches against Roman in a row. He lost at TLC, he lost in the Steel Cage, and then he lost the Last Man Standing match. No matter how wacky, right, you know, the finishes were with the, the you know, with the handcuffs or Jey Uso getting involved, KO was not able to get the job done. And he's not he's never gonna beat Roman for that title. It's just not happening. So why are you gonna waste our time with it? You know, why are you gonna waste our time having KO in the chamber when we know the end result? We know that KO nor anybody else is gonna win. They're not gonna defeat Roman. It's not happening. Right? Plus, KO's already had his shot. I would give that if if you're not gonna if you're if you're gonna give spots to people in the elimination chamber, give that to someone like Shinsuke Nakamura. Who's trying to rebuild himself as a top guy on SmackDown, right? KO's had his fun. It doesn't matter how much you try to build KO up. He's not taking that title from Roman. He's, excuse me, he's had his shot and now is the time to move on. You know, I know not everyone's going to like that, but, you know, if, if we're being honest, that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. All right. Uh... So, yeah, so that's the way the opening segment ended. Like I said, it wasn't bad, but I'm, you know, I'm getting fatigued of the Romans starting the show every single week. I'm, I'm tired of that, right? And it's just not that interesting to me anymore. Nothing at all, you know? So we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, they built the rest of the show around having people qualify for the Elimination Chamber. We had King Corbin and Sami Zayn versus Rey Mysterio and Dominic. The second I saw this match, I knew who was going to win because they said whoever uh, the team that won this match would uh, be put in the Elimination Chamber. And it was pretty obvious, right? You know, they didn't, they don't, they didn't do the normal route where they did, you know, singles qualifying matches. They just did tag team matches just because, you know, they only have a week till Elimination Chamber. Elimination Chamber is legit next week. Right? So they're trying to rust, you know, rust their way in the book in the show. And I knew you're not going to put Dominic in the in the Elimination Chamber. Dominic being a Universal Champion or just being in the Universal title pitcher makes no sense to anybody. No, I'm not interested in seeing it. I don't want to see it. I said, if you want to make things interesting for Dominic and Ray, maybe you have to go after the Tag Team Championships. Right, you could do some. There's some probably some unique stories they could do there. Father and son teaming up, all that stuff. Uh, but keep Dominic away from any singles title picture. I'm not really interested in that. Right. So the second that I saw that Dominic was in this match, I knew who was gonna win. CBZ came out and cut a promo. Right. Uh, and Zayn said in his promo, uh, that basically even though him and Baron Corbin, they don't see. Uh, eye to eye all the time, but they definitely saw eye to eye tonight because they had to work together to get themselves inside the chamber. 
you know, and then Ray and Dominic attacked Zayn before the match because Zayn was going on and on. And then we got the match. I didn't watch the match. I didn't care about the match. I knew who was going to win. Right. And basically the match ended after Dominic and Ray both hit 619s on Corbin. But Zayn ended up hitting a uh, a halluva kick on Dominic Mysterio, getting the pin and the win. So Sami Zayn and Baron Corbin qualify for the elimination. Chamber, I don't, I don't care. Like Corbin's not winning it. Zayn's not winning it. I like Zayn. I don't care about Corbin, right? So, you know, I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I, I don't know if you guys. I don't know. I may have mentioned this on the Monday Night Raw podcast, but just very quickly, I don't know if you guys saw, but there was this thing on Twitter of Brooker T saying that Baron Corbin is a better King of the Ring than Stone Cold Steve Austin. And you guys wonder why I think Brooker T is such a clown, right? Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold Steve Austin, who won the King of the Ring, and that was the birth of the one of the greatest characters in the history of WWE. In my opinion, the greatest WWE superstar of all time, right? I think The Undertaker is the greatest character that was ever created. But in terms of the greatest of all time, I think that goes to Stone Cold Steve Austin, for the females, I think it's Sasha Banks. But for the men, it's Stone Cold Steve Austin. I cannot wait to see uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin have Sasha Banks on the uh, on the Broken Skull sessions here in a couple weeks. I'm very excited for that. Uh, but yeah, that was that's my thoughts on that. You know, Baron Corbin being a better king in the ring than Stone Cold Steve Austin. Get out of here with that. All right, don't stop being a clown. Freaking, oh my gosh, that dude is, uh, that dude is such a clown. Anyway, anyway, next up, we had uh, Big E, uh, he came out to do an IC Open Challenge, so Big E was in the ring, right, and uh, basically he said that he was putting Apollo Crews and Sami Zayn uh, behind him after his successful title defense last week, right, and he was going to do an open challenge, but then Apollo Crews showed up. This annoyed me, right? Because it's still the same old Apollo we've been getting for the last three years. They keep teasing this Apollo Crews heel turn, but it seems like they they never pulled the, the plug on it, right? Every week, you know, some weeks he might beat somebody by, you know, uh, holding the tight, or he might put his feet on the ropes, right? Or they have him talking to Roman Reigns backstage, you know? Tonight, we see him interfere in Big E's match. They keep teasing the, the Apollo heel turn, but they never go full force with it. It bothers me a lot. It truly does. So, uh, Apollo, you know, Apollo shows up and uh, basically Apollo's like, I'm here to accept your challenge, right? But Biggie was like, yes, I was going to do an open challenge, but it was for anybody other than you or Sami Zayn, people that he's already defeated. He wants new challengers, right? Uh, but, uh, Apollo tried to go the whole baby face route, like, come on, Big E, aren't you a fighting champion, all this, and Big E is like, yes, I am a fighting champion, but you've had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity, right, no matter if it was Sami Zayn interfering, or no matter if it was a triple threat match, or a normal match, you've had more chances at the eliminate, or not the elimin at the IC title than anybody, I think Apollo's had, like, maybe four title matches in the last month and a half, so you can see where Biggie's coming from. And the thing about it is, I like this because Biggie, you know, put the mic down, right? He put the mic down, you know, and he, he gets in Apollo's face and he's just like, dude, just go back to catering. And Apollo's like, you're going to disrespect me like that? Really? You know, give me the title match. Come on. What do you like? Let's do this, you know? And I like this because usually the dumb baby face would be like, all right, you know, you get another title match, right? Kind of like what they were doing with Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton. You know, how, you know, Drew just kept giving Randy Orton title match after title match just because, oh, he's Randy Orton, right? But here you have Biggie, a smart baby face, being like, no, you've had your chances. You failed. It's time for you to get to the back of the line. Go back to Kading where you belong. So I like what they did here with Biggie, man. I like that, right? You know, I like what Biggie was being serious here. Here you have the champion actually standing up like, no, I'm the champion. I decide who gets the title matches here, right? So, I actually did like this a lot. So, then Shinsuke Nakamura came out, right? Nakamura, he recently turned babyface. So, then we get Nakamura versus Big E, which I've actually been saying is a match I would not mind, right? 
So we got in the match. We come back from break and, you know, Cruz is at ringside. You knew what was going to happen here. This was very, very short, right? They, you know, Nakamura and Biggie went into their big moves pretty quickly here, right? Uh, Nakamura hit a flying knee through the middle rope for a two count. Biggie then planted him with the uh, you Gary. Then uh, this was for a near fall. Biggie went for the uh, the big ending here, but you knew what was going to happen. Cruz came into the ring and delivered a drop kick to cause a disqualification, right? And Cruz kept mouthing off to Biggie, saying, "We are net. We're you know we're never going to be done. We're never going to be done. We're just getting started." So they're teasing that the Apollo Biggie feud is going to continue. Like I said, still this is not a heel turn. It's still not a full-out heel turn. This is this Biggie, or you know, this is Apollo saying that he wants another shot at the IC title, and he's not going to go away. That's all it is. It's not you know anything like that. I'm sorry, it's not. But either way, I am interested to see where they go with this. I definitely am. Right? Will Apollo win the title? I don't think so. I don't. I think Seth Rollins is going to be the one to take the IC title from Big E. I think that's where they're going with this. And I think we're going to end up with Daniel Bryan versus Seth Rollins for the SmackDown uh, IC title at WrestleMania. That's where I think we're heading. So we'll see. Maybe this is, you know, past time, right? It could be Seth versus Bryan versus Big E in a triple threat match. But I think that's where we're heading going to WrestleMania season, you know, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see how they do this, right? Uh, but I, if, if you're going to do the Apollo Crews heel turn, does Jew do it already. Stop wasting our time. Honestly, stop wasting our time. Just do it, get it done, and let's move on with our lives. Stop teasing it every single week, okay? But either way, man, this was a, it was whatever, right? But like I said, if you're going to turn Apollo heel, just do it. I don't see Apollo winning the title, but if you're going to turn him heel, just do it. Stop with this nonsense every single week, right? Stop teasing a heel turn. Stop having him do heel actions, but then the next week he comes out with the same baby face Apollo crew smile. Like, no. We're not, like, I'm sorry. I, I think we, we're all over that at this point. If you're going to turn Apollo heel, just do it already, okay? Speaking of Seth Rollins, after that, we had Seth Rollins' return. So they brought out the entire SmackDown roster, and they had the roster at ringside for uh, Rollins' return promo. And basically, this was almost like, you know, uh, history coming full circle. If you remember, when Seth originally turned heel back at the end of 2019, right, when he first started adapting the Messiah gimmick, remember, Seth was a babyface here, right? And, you know, he was belating everybody at ringside, which was actually a really good segment. But here, what they did with this segment is, you know, first off, it was like they were teasing Seth was going to be a babyface again, right? So... Basically, Seth has a whole new graphic, right? It's like almost looks like he's like uh, Negan Rollins, right? Or Seth Negan. You know, he had a nice new black suit with a red tie. So his look changed just a little bit. And he had his old music back. No more of the Messiah gimmick. No more of this Messiah music. Even though I had gotten used to that, right? It was really good to hear the old burn it down. And the thing about it is the burn it down music is, you know, mainly for when Seth was a babyface, right? The burn it down, it's meant to get the crowd into it, to get the crowd hyped for Seth to come out, you know? It's supposed to be an exciting moment. It's not really meant to be for a heel. So, you know, it was like they were giving you, you know, all the vibes that Seth was going to turn babyface. Plus, Seth, you know, he, when he came in the ring, he started talking about, how, you know, how he sacrificed himself at Survivor Series and how the time that he was gone, he had just became a father, you know. So, you know, talking about, you know, him and Becky Lynch, how they're now parents and how he has a beautiful baby girl and how, you know, that, you know, how she means the world to him. So some really cool stuff here with Seth. But then... uh. It, you know, how being a father had changed him in ways he didn't expect. So they were giving you every all the teases about, you know, Seth now being a baby face and, you know, making that turn. Right. Because we heard rumors that Seth was going to turn baby face and be like, you know, the fatherhood baby face. You know, the one that, you know, wanted to do the right thing for his kids. That was the kind of baby face Seth was going to be now. And, you know, I have no problem with it. I'm, you know, the Messiah gimmick, they, 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 it ran its course. 
right? We don't even, I don't even know, remember the last time we saw Buddy Murphy on TV. You know, we haven't seen him since, since Seth was taken off TV, which is kind of sad because Buddy Murphy is actually a really good in-ring competitor, but now he's not being used at all. But then Seth, you know, starts going on talking about how he realizes he's the great leader that SmackDown needs to make it great. You know, pulling some Donald Trump BS here. Then, he, uh, you know, all of a sudden, I loved how the entire roster re- walked away. It's like the roster saw where they were, just, you know, where Seth was going, right? And the whole point, Seth sees the roster leaving, but he's still talking. It's like he's so blindsided by his own ego and how high he thinks of himself that he couldn't realize what what was going on around him, what was going on in reality, right, how everybody was, you know, walking away, right, and, you know, the lights came on, and, you know, he realizes that the only person that was still at ringside was Cesaro, but Cesaro, it was like Cesaro was there just taunting Rollins, he was just like, look, man, just stop with the nonsense, get out of here, so then Cesaro, uh, starts walking away. Then Seth uh, goes after he hits uh Cesaro with a uh with a uh, a knee clip, and then he started beating him down. Right, Daniel Bryan and some fis- some officials came out to you know break everything up. But for now, at least, it looks like Seth is still a heel. Right, so his gimmick has changed a little bit, but now he's talking about vision, which at the end of the day, it's still mostly, you know, similar to how his Messiah gimmick was, but, you know, it's not, you know, fully different, right, and I don't know, maybe this is eventually gonna, you know, change, and, you know, eventually Seth's gonna become a a full-on babyface, right, but for right now, they have him as a heel, and... Honestly, I'm not really interested in seeing the Messiah game anymore. I got more and more annoyed of it as time went on, right? Because he kept giving the same promos every single week. So maybe, you know, Seth just does this for a couple weeks and we slowly see him transition into a baby face. But I definitely think, you know, at least till WrestleMania, Seth will probably remain as a heel. Because I think Seth's WrestleMania match is going to be Daniel Bryan versus Seth Rollins. I think that's what it's going to be. I think that Big E, you know, if he ends up facing Apollo at the Elimination Chamber, that's how they're going to end that for you. They're going to put, you know, the nail in the coffin of it. And I can definitely see Seth, right, going on the challenge Big E maybe at Fastlane for the IC title. Seth wins the IC title, and maybe it ends up being Seth versus Daniel Bryan for the IC title at WrestleMania. And even though that's a world title match, and even though Daniel Bryan versus Seth Rollins would be fantastic, it's still disappointing because I feel like we all know and all believe that it should be Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns for the Universal title. It's, you know, and it, it's it's kind of, it kind of sucks. Do you see? That's the way it ended. You know, I, if it was me personally, I would have done. Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns for the Universal title at Mania, and then do Seth versus Big E for the IC title at Mania. That's what I would have done, right? Give both of those names big matches at Mania. Give Big E a big WrestleMania moment. How, you know, Seth put Big E over. That's what I would have done, right? And then after WrestleMania, then you turn Seth into a babyface. But, you know, it looks like right now they're teasing us with uh, Seth versus Daniel Bryan, which I'm not going to complain about, but I, I feel like there's a much better direction here that WWE could have gone, uh, you know, you know, could have gone with. All right, and th- that's my thoughts on that. Next up, they had Bailey versus Liv Morgan, right? So Bailey's continuing her mini feud here with the Riot Squad, which I don't have a problem with. This is what Bailey should be doing right now. Right, this was basically very similar to what happened last week. This was actually a decent match, you know. Uh, Liv Morgan had some really good uh, moves here. Bailey did a good job of selling Liv's offense. Liv, there was a couple of near falls here where it looked like Liv would get the win. Liv hit a face buster here near the end. Bailey knocked her off of the middle rope and hit a shoulder breaker, right. But then Morgan hits in in Suguri. So then Billy Kay came down to talk to Ruby Riot at ringside, right? And it was a distraction, but it wasn't really a distraction that, you know, caused Liv Morgan to, you know, lose the match, right? You know, it was just Billy Kay being Billy Kay, being annoying, right? You know, 
uh, it's more on Liv Morgan because it's not like Billy Kay got in the ring and interfered in the match. She was just talking to Ruby Riot, right? All of a sudden, we see Billy's, you know, resumes fall into the ring, and it didn't really cause a distraction. It's just that Liv looked at the, you know, the resumes for a second, and then Bailey hit her with the, uh, with the knee finisher. I don't, I don't think she has a a name for it, but you guys get the point. Uh, and that was that. So Bailey gets another win over the Riot Squad, and that was that. So. I don't know where this is going, right? And, you know, they can't keep doing this every single week. Either Billy's going to fully join the Riot Squad or she's going to, you know, be kicked out of the Riot Squad permanently, right? See, like, they can't keep going on like this forever, you know? We understand Billy Kay's a wacky character, but, you know, you got to make a decision here, right? Come on, like, let's go. Make a choice. Stop wasting our time with this. Next up, we had the Street Profits. So the Street Profits... Uh, they were actually at the Daytona 500, right? You know, uh, because the you know Daytona Speedway is in Florida. They awarded Chase Elliott with a, her, you know his own custom WWE Championship belt, right? Like so that you know uh, WWE NASCAR kind of have a partnership just because they're both on Fox, right? So and we know that Sasha Banks she's gonna be the honorary starter for the Daytona 500 this Sunday, which a lot of people are talking about. So you know it's free advertising for NASCAR. It's you know WWE gets some free advertising from NASCAR. Or vice versa so it works out for everybody right uh and then you know after that we got the street profits going up against alpha academy aka otis and uh chad gable this was not a bad match it wasn't terrible right you know it was just more to highlight that the street profits want another shot at the smackdown tag team championships being held currently by bobby Roode and chad gable right so nothing you know, clear here, right? Nothing big. Uh, maybe this is a match that happens on the pre-show, the Elimination Chamber. Maybe they save it for Fastlane. I don't know. But uh, I do think that, like I said, I do think the Street Profits will get those tag team titles back eventually. All right? And that's my thoughts on that. Moving on. We had Sasha Banks, right? So first off, Sasha had three segments on the show. She was out for the Seth Rollins segment, right? Uh, she was ordered the last to walk away. You know, I kind of like that. You know, when champions walking out last, right? We also had Sasha. She had a quick backstage segment where she was talking to Kaliso and Reginald came up to Sasha with some wine, right? Reginald apologized, you know, for his actions last week. And Sasha was like, yeah, whatever, you know. But Sasha then, you know, started touching Reginald and was like, do you really think I can beat Bianca at Mania, right? And Reginald was like, of course. And Sasha was like, <laughs> I know, right? And then Sasha takes the wine and it looks like she she drunk it, right? At first, I was like, please don't tell me they're doing, you know, the like a uh like Sasha gets sick. Like, you know, Reginald puts something in the drink and Sasha gets sick at the end of the day. I, I hope they weren't doing that. It doesn't look like they were doing that, right? Because we saw Sasha, like I said, we saw Sasha three times on the show last night and she looked fine. But at first, that's the concern I had, right? But Sasha just drank the wine and that was it. Or the champagne, not the wine. Why, why do I keep saying wine? The champagne. You guys get the point. So then uh, Sasha comes out after the Street Profits match. I like this. You know, the Street Profits are dancing with Sasha and her music. So that was a pretty cool moment, right? And, you know, it was kind of funny. It's ironic because Montez Ford is the husband of Bianca Belair. And here's Montez Ford out here, you know, DJing the Sasha's music. But, you know, it was pretty cool, you know? So Sasha comes out. She's wearing all blue. If you guys notice, she, they actually changed Sasha's side plates, right? They're actually blue now. The mask with the SmackDown Women's Championship being blue. Right, if you remember before, she had the red side plates, but now they're blue, so I, I like that a lot. Sasha talked a little bit about Bianca and how she respects her, but Bianca needs to make her decision, you know. And you know, it doesn't matter, you know, if Bianca ends up choosing Sasha, she's going to lose. And I don't have to go into the whole spear of why Sasha needs to retain. I have the videos up on the channel, we're talking about it every podcast. Sasha needs to retain because she has not won a WrestleMania match. It's pretty much that simple at the end of the day, right? It's, it's really that simple. Right? Sasa has to retain at Mania. You know? And if she doesn't, she's going to go down 0-6. And one of the greatest of all time should not have to deal with that. 
She she shouldn't. I read something like earlier this week that Asuka has never won a WrestleMania match, which is crazy to think about. Sasha Banks and Asuka, two of the best female wrestlers of all time, never have won WrestleMania matches. While Charlotte is going for her eighth, or not her eighth, her fourth WrestleMania victory this year. Because I feel like we all know that Charlotte's going to be in the Raw Women's Championship match at Mania. So then what happens here is... Uh... What happens here is we see all of a sudden uh, what happened. We saw Bianca Belair came out. Bianca was like, I like you a lot too, Sasha. But you beating me? Uh-uh. I love when Bianca does that. that uh-uh. 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 I can make a beat out of that. Uh-uh. 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 Did a boom, 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 boom. Okay. Let me stop myself. But anyway, you guys get the point. Bianca comes out. You know, the interactions with Sasha and Bianca are great. And I actually saw on Talking Smack, Paul Heyman was trying to, like, kind of instigate Sasha into turning heel. Right? You know, be, you know, Paul was like, the old Sasha Banks would be someone to attack Bianca from behind. To try to get every advantage going into that WrestleMania match. Match. And you just know, so it's like they're already teasing Sasha turning heel. But I'm just like, Sasha just turned heel months ago back in October. She just turned babyface in October, people. It's only been, what, one, two, four months since she's turned babyface? And now you're gonna turn her back heel? You don't need Sasha as a heel for Bianca. You don't. You, it, it doesn't make sense. You can do the babyface versus babyface route. So, basically what happens here is Sasha, you know, and Bianca, they're going at it, you know, right, respectfully. And then the, you know, Nia Jackson, Shayna Baszler show up. And I'm just like, oh, gosh, I could tell where this was going right away, right? They come out and they're like, oh, why, don't any, why isn't anybody talking about us? We're the ones that beat Sean and Asuka to regain the tag team championships. No one cares about Bianca and her little decision or you, Sasha, as the champion. Nobody cares, right? And then, you know, I, I was like, why are you guys on the show? I understand if you're tag champions, you get to be on all shows, but they had no business here, right? There, there was really nobody asked for them. There was really no point. They don't elevate a show like Sasha and Bailey did when they were heel tag team champions, you know, in the summer of last year. So basically, Sasha plays a clip, right, where they replayed what happened between Naomi and Shayna Baszler last week on Raw. And they also show the clip of the Lana versus uh, Nia Jax table match and the whole thing of Nia talking about her hole, her hole. Right. And I'm just like, nobody cares. You're a fat bitch. Get out the get off the television nobody cares right so then what happens is uh basically you know Nia's like really really that's funny and then she attacks Sasha and then you know Sasha and Bianca they get in a quick little brawl with Shane and Nia and then you know they see the you know they threw Nia out of the ring and Nia fell on the apron again and you know Nia didn't say her hold this time but you guys could tell this was an easter egg to what had just happened on Monday Night Raw so you have Sasha then she picked up the tag team championship belt right and her Smackdown Women's title and she was like oh so basically it's like they're teasing Sasha wanting to be a double champion again like she was with Bailey, you know, and her and Bianca going after the tag team championships. Remember, Sasha and Bianca did have a triple threat tag team title match with Charlotte and Asuka and Bailey and Carmella on the Christmas edition of SmackDown about a month and a half ago. Look, I'm not interested in seeing it. I'm not, I'm not, as, as good as Sasha Banks is, I don't want to see Sasha in the ring with Nia Jax. It, 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 there's no world when I want to see that. Plus, Nia is an unsafe worker, and if you don't believe that, you're just you're just an idiot, right? You're just an idiot. So, uh, look, there's a chance that maybe, maybe at the Elimination Chamber, Sasha doesn't defend her title at all. Maybe you know it turns into a triple threat, and we have Sasha and Bianca versus Nia and Shayna versus Carmel or not Carmel versus Lon and Naomi, right? And maybe they do the storyline where Sasha and Bianca win the tag titles as babyfaces. And then they go into WrestleMania season as the tag team champions. 
right? Basically, they would do what Shawn Michaels and John Cena did back in 2007 when they were building to their WWE Championship match at WrestleMania 20, 23. And I would argue that Cena versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 23 is probably John Cena's greatest WrestleMania match ever. It probably is. That match is an absolute classic. Go back and watch on the network. That is probably Cena's best Mania match ever. All right? And, you know, I'm not saying I'm against that storyline, but I don't think Sasha Bianca really need the tag team title belt, right? Sure, it would just Sasha be getting another tag team championship reign, but like I said, they just did this with Asuka, and, you know, you guys, I'm not really for one of my champions going for a tag team title belt, right? Because remember, Asuka didn't do anything with the Raw Women's Championship while she was teaming with Charlotte. So what, if Sasha and Bianca win the tag team title belts, what, you know, is Sasha going to focus more on defending the tag titles rather than defending her women's championship? I don't know. If you, if you have Sasha defending the SmackDown Women's Championship at the same rate that she's defending the tag titles, right? And she gets to show off how much of a workhorse she is, kind of like what she did with Bayley when they were the Golden Role Models, then I'm all for it. Then I'm here for it. Like, all right, bet. I'm, give it to me, right? But if you're not going to do that, then why are you wasting our time? If you're going to have Sasha focus on the tag titles more than being a SmackDown Women's Champion, then I don't want that. Because we just saw that with Asuka. And I don't care if it gets Sasha another reign. I don't, I don't care if we get to see Sasha as a double champion again. I want Sasha, her priority to always be defending those SmackDown Women's Championship. If Sasha is defending the tag titles with Bianca and focusing on defending the SmackDown Women's title at the same rate, then fine, do it. It would be a good it would be a good story, but I just don't trust WWE to do that unless Sasha is back there in creative telling them, you know, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do that. That's the only way I would accept it. OK, so we'll see. We'll see if this is going to lead to, uh, you know, Sasha and Bianca winning the tag titles and then eventually right tag team champions having to face each other at WrestleMania for the big title, the SmackDown Women's Championship. And what's crazy is John Cena and Shawn Michaels, when they did that storyline, like I said, it resulted in one of the greatest WrestleMania main events ever. That match is a classic. And if Sasha and Bianca main event night won a WrestleMania, like some people believe they should, I believe they should. Because Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus as the main event of night one is not a main event to me, right? Then we're in business, right? We're in business. It's that simple at the end of the day. So let's see what happens. I am ex- I am intrigued, but let's see what happens here, right? Because it looks like right now Sasha's not defending the SmackDown Women's title at the Elimination Chamber. Uh, I, I don't want them making an opponent for her in one week. Right. So we'll see if they go down the tag title route. Right. So maybe Sasha and Bianca win the titles at the Elimination Chamber. Sasha defends her title at Fastlane. Right. So she gets another defense in before Mania. And then we get there. But I, I will say no matter what they do, no matter if they go down the tag team title route or not, Sasha has to retain at Mania against Bianca. It's that simple. All right. It's that simple. And if you guys haven't checked out that video where I go in depth on why Sasha has to defend and retain at Mania, you know, go check out that video out. If Bianca is going to become the SmackDown Women's Champion, it has to happen at SummerSlam. And I will continue to remind you guys of that every single week, no matter what. Okay? Last but not least here, we had uh, the Dirty Dogs, Rude and Ziggler, right? The SmackDown Tag Team Champions against Cesaro and Daniel Bryan. The winner of this match would be the last two to qualify for the Elimination Chamber match. This was good, right? I actually like Rude and Ziggler's new theme song. It's kind of a mix of the Glorious song and the, you know, Ziggler's theme song. So I kind of like that. I, I like how they have, the, you know, the jackets and everything too. So like I said, they, Rude and Ziggler, man, I, I like them as a tag team. It works, you know? Uh, remember Cesaro, he was, uh, Daniel Bryan had to carry the team really because remember Cesaro was, you know, wearing off the effects of the attack from Seth Rollins earlier in the night, right? Uh, but Cesaro still got his stuff in. So basically, uh, near the end here, uh, Cesaro hit Ziggler with a torture rack backbreaker. Then he hit the sharpshooter for the submission victory. So Cesaro and Bryan are in the chamber. No surprise there, right? But right after they won the match, 
Uso attacks Cesaro with a chair, right? Then we see Corman and Zay. So this was just a full-out brawl between everybody in the Elimination Chamber match. So I'm going to give you guys a prediction next week. Next week, we're going to get a six-man tag. It's going to be Kevin Owens, Daniel Bryan, and Cesaro against uh, against Corbin, Zayn, and uh, Jay Uso. I, I guarantee you that's a match for next week on SmackDown. I know how this company operates. We're going to get that six-man tag team match next week on SmackDown. Right? Uh, so as everybody is, you know, fighting, KO ran down and hit stunners on everybody. Like this was 1998 Stone Cold Steve Austin. Right? He hit stunner on Jey Uso, hit a stunner on, you know, Corbin, hit a stunner on Zayn. So he's just diffing out stunners left and right. And uh, the show ends with KO saying that he's coming for Reigns. I'm not done with you. And that was that. So, like, even though I didn't mind the ending of the show, I just, like I said, it doesn't matter what you do. The winner of the Elimination Chamber match is, is you know, ultimately going to lose because they're not going to defeat Roman, no matter if they do the match the same night or if they delay the match for Fastlane. I tell you, they're going to be fucked up with the way they did the Elimination Chamber match. If they had just announced Edge going for the WWE Championship, this would not be a problem. It's that simple, right? I would rather either have Roman defend his title inside the Elimination Chamber or have Sasha defend her title inside the Elimination Chamber. It's that simple. It's that simple, right? But other than that, guys, that's all I got for you guys today, man. Like I said, SmackDown wasn't bad. It's just that what they did with the Elimination Chamber bugs me because they could have gone about it in a much better way. Right, uh, so but you know, it is what it is. We'll see what happens with Seth Rollins, but I still think Seth versus Daniel Bryan is most likely the direction that they're going, you know. So we'll see how that unfolds, and we still need to see what happens with Sasha, you know, if Sasha and Bianca are going after the tag titles and they're gonna pull a WrestleMania 23 with John Cena and Shawn Michaels here. We'll just have to wait and see. But other than that, guys, SmackDown wasn't bad tonight, you know, it wasn't a terrible show, it built towards the Elimination Chamber. And we'll see how this continues to unfold on the road to WrestleMania. Other than that, guys, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you guys so very much for joining me on the podcast tonight. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, leave a like on this video. Subscribe. Hit that bell next to my name, Fitzmunk TV, so you guys are notified every time I post a new video. Go check out the Monday Night Raw review. Go check out the video I did on why Sasha has to retain against Bianca if that match ends up happening at WrestleMania 37. Other than that, guys, that's all I got for you guys. Stay safe. Stay healthy, y'all. I'll see you guys later. Have a great day, guys. Peace.